In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to build your first SEO AI agent. And to do that, we will use N8N and it'll have a workflow that looks something like this. But I thought I would just quickly run you through all the components of how this is going to work. And the main takeaway is not exactly each step by step, but the concept of how to use AI agents to build anything you want. And we'll start with this really cool example, which is the SEO AI agent. Now, I was going to try to explain this in more technical terms, and I actually built this diagram here, but I think it's way overwhelming. So we're going to go back to basics and we will use this one here. So let's get into it. Now, all AI agents basically work in the same way. We start over here on the left and we have an input trigger. So this, think of it like the user message or the boss. You send a task in to an employee to get the job done. So this big node here in the middle, just think of it like an employee. This is the AI agent. And the AI agent can handle instructions and it has a brain. Typically this brain will be Anthropic, Google Gemini. Now, if we think of the AI agent as an employee, an employee has a job description. So if we follow this line down here to the node system prompt, Basically, just think of the system prompt as the AI agent's job description. Now, like any good employee, it has access to tools to get the job done, and so does an AI agent. We can connect various tools to the agent so it can actually complete the task in the best, best manner possible. Also, using the analogy of an employee, an employee has memory, so you don't have to keep repeating the same things. It understands context, context, what it was asked, and what it needs to, to do. So we have memory. When the employee has been given a task by the boss, it uses the system prompt, the tools, and its memory, and the brain collectively to get the job done, and then it will provide the output. So that is how it works. And if you understand this, you can pretty much start putting together any kind of AI agent you like, but we're gonna build an SEO AI agent. So let's get started with constructing the workflow. Now we are gonna be using N8N. So if you don't have an account, head over here to n8n.io, sign up, and then you get a 14, 14 day free trial. So you can do all of this, have a play around, and it won't cost you anything. We're over in N8N, let's get into it. First thing, just head up to the plus button in the top left, create a workflow, in personal is fine, and then we want to add our first node. That first node is going to be a chat trigger node. So we just add it by going up here and typing in chat, chat trigger. We don't have to do anything, so we can go back to the canvas. The next node we want is actually our AI agent, so just hit the plus button, type in AI agent, there it is. Now, I'm also going to add the chat model, the memory, and the tool, and then we'll configure the authorization and those credentials so we can access them. So with the chat model, I'll go with Google Gemini Chat. It was only added to N18 yesterday, so it's quite new. And you can see here, it's grabbed the Gemini 2.5 flash, which is fine. Next is memory. We'll just add simple memory. And this is going to allow our chat model to understand the context if we have back and forth conversations Next, we will add perplexity. This is going to be our research tool that is going to go out to the web, that is going to be key to our SEO AI agent's job. So perplexity, and there it is. Thinking back to our previous diagram, this is the boss. This is where a message is going to come in. This is the employee. It now has access to a brain to think, understand, and act. It has memory, and now it also has a tool being perplexity. Next step is to add our credentials and then our system prompt, which will give the job description for our AI agent. The first credential we're after is our Google Gemini chat model key. Let's grab that. To get our Google Gemini key, we just need to go to aistudio.google.com. You'll get to this page and you'll see up the top here, get API key. When you click on it, it'll say create an API key click here and then it'll ask you to select your Google Cloud project that you want that key associated with. So if you do not have a Google Cloud project set up, you need to do that. It's pretty straightforward. If you head over to console.cloud.google.com, 
you'll get to a page that looks something like this. It's totally free to log into and set up your project. To create a new project, you just click up the top. And if you don't have any projects, you'll just click this button here, new project, give it a name, save it. Once you've done that, refresh your page over in AI Studio. And when you click on this drop down box, as you can see here in 18 workflows, that's the one I have here. Then all you do is select the project you created and create API key in existing project. Copy the API key and then we go back over into N8N and add it into our node. And now's the easy bit. We just open up Gemini Chat. You go up here and click on this little pencil icon. You can see I've already got mine set up, but if we click on this here, the only thing you need to do is paste the API key in right here where it says API key and press save. So now we'll grab our Perplexity API key and we're just about there. To get a Perplexity API key is super easy. Just head to perplexity.ai, go down to your account. When you click on that, you can then add an API key. So we just press create API key, copy it. Then we go back to N8N and set it up. So just click on your Perplexity node. Again, see the little pencil icon, click on it paste your API key in there and you are good. So for perplexity, we do need to choose a model. Now this will depend on the use case. So we're going to be doing SEO research to generate an amazing bit of content and some other metadata. What I'm going to choose is Sonar Pro, which is sort of somewhere in the middle between Sonar and Deep Research. This one takes quite a while to run, but Sonar Pro, nice and quick, and it costs only maybe one or two cents per, per run. For this text area here, all we need to do is click on this, let the model define the parameter. So super easy, that's it. Now at this point, we can actually run the model, but keep in mind that we haven't given the job description to the AI agent yet. If you think back to our initial diagram, we had this job description, we haven't provided it. So it's gonna give a fairly rudimentary response but that's okay. We can see that it's all working and we can do the final bit of configuration. So if we click on open chat, I can just say hello and all the nodes should fire up. And it did exactly what we'd expect. The AI agent wouldn't call perplexity because it, it has no reason to. It simply responded with, as you can see here in the output, hello, how can I assist you today? If we now go into the AI agent, we can configure it to make sure the correct input is coming in that we want it to, to assess. If we click on this one here and we go to define below, we can just drag chat input over into the prompt and that's what you're seeing here. And if you wanna see what this actual value is, you can click on this little parameter. We can see the JSON input is actually equal to hello, which is what we'd expect. So now we're going to give the job description or the system prompt to the AI agent so it knows what its job is, what tools it has, and what the expectation of the output should be. Just go back into the AI agent, and down here you'll see add an option, and that's where we can add a system message. At the moment, it just says you're a helpful assistant, which isn't that helpful at all. If we click in here, now I'm going to paste in a system prompt. So this is a fairly detailed system prompt. I will make it available in the community if you want to take a copy of it. In essence, what it's saying is this AI agent is a AI powered SEO content strategist and its primary function is to act as a sophisticated research analyst and copywriter. And what it will do based on the keyword or key phrase that we provide it via the trigger, it will go away and it'll do research with perplexity, and then it will use its brain, being Google Gemini, to generate the content being title, meta title, meta description, the content, and it'll also give us a bit of a summary as to the reasoning, why it did it, and some of the expected keyword volumes. To test out our model, all we need to do is click on open chat. Now this is our keyword, our key phrase. So I'm gonna put in product photography and see if we can generate a top article around that, that keyword. And you can see the model was triggered. Our AI agent had to think about the, the question, it understood it, and then it, it used the tool, which is what it should do, go off to perplexity and do some research on the web, synth synthesize that, that information, bring it back, write the article. 
Okay, so the process completed successfully. It's given it a title here, Evaluate Your Brand, Mastering Product Photography in the Digital Age. It also gave some options for different potential SEO titles. It gave the meta titles, it gave meta descriptions to choose from. And then we have a table of contents and then the article itself, which I can tell you is around two and a half thousand words. Our AI agent can take an input and then go away and do research on the web with perplexity and then craft a high quality blog article. Now, at this point, you might be wondering, well, that's great, but where does my blog article go? So if we just minimize the chat window for a minute. So basically you have full control over the input trigger and the output where you want this to go. For example, instead of having a chat message to trigger it, you could use Telegram, you could use a Google Sheet. And in terms of where you want the output to go, some common ones would be something like WordPress. So if you click here, type in WordPress, WordPress, create a post, add your credentials, and then the article will be sent to WordPress. Likewise, it could be Webflow, create an item, and there we have Webflow connected, add your credentials, and you're good. Some other options that are quite common would be a Google document. Now for this one, you actually create a document first and then you update a document, but I think you get the picture. You can use all the tools available within N8N to send that data. You could do additional processing, whatever you like. The main thing is, I hope you've understood how to build your first AI agent, the role of the agent, what gives it its job description, how you connect the brain, the memory and the tools. And now with those skills, you should be able to build lots of different agents. If you got some value from the video, consider giving it a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will catch you in the next one.